trapped in the underworld, surrounded by the angry dead, under the thumb of our dictatorial father? I guess it's time we learn how to fight. Hello everybody and welcome to Madsimus, the game analysis channel dedicated to helping you get good. Today we're going to cover six combat tips for beginners in Supergiant's new game, Hades. The basics of Hades combat is pretty simple. You pick a weapon, collect boons from the Olympians, and then slash, dash, and smash your way through waves of the undead on your quest to escape the underworld. However, there are a number of fine details that separate the experienced Hades players from the noobs. And that's what we're going to be covering in this video. So to begin with, tip number one, attacks destroy energy projectiles. The first of our tips is that a well-timed basic attack or flourish attack can destroy the floating energy spheres that the witches of Tartarus, Asphodel, and Elysium throw at you, as well as the triangular energy blasts of the Dracons and the Bone Hydra. This is an important skill to master because as you get further into the underworld, you will have more and more and even more of these projectiles thrown at you and you'll likely have a number of melee enemies attacking you at the same time. The Stygian Blade is particularly well suited to this tactic, as its broad sweeps on the basic attack and large AoE on the Nova Smash create a little bubble of safety for you when timed correctly under fire. Don't ignore this tip with ranged weapons either, as the Adamant Rail can destroy every single projectile an enemy launches at you while you're shooting them, and the special flourish attack on the Heartseeker Bow can clear an entire quadrant in front of you of ranged attacks. Being able to destroy projectiles on the melee-only weapons will help you overcome the major weakness of the Malphon Fists and the Stygian Blade, which is that you can potentially be punished very harshly by ranged enemies when they are positioned in hard-to-reach areas where there is a large gap to close between you and them. As a nice little bonus tip, this also works against the projectiles launched by the Fury Sisters in Tartarus, which is helpful since they all have a stationary bullet hell style ranged attack that can quickly grind through Zagreus's health. This does only work against the Witches, Furies, Dracons, and Bone Hydra though. You cannot destroy the ranged attacks of any other enemy. So if you want to handle the Medusa or Wavemaker ranged attacks, for example, you'll need a deflect skill on either your basic attack, your flourish, your cast, or your dash. Tip number two, wall slams deal bonus damage. The second tip that we'll cover is using wall slams to deal extra damage to your enemies. You may have noticed in your first few runs through the underworld that when you attack an enemy with the Stygian Blade against the wall, they seem to die faster. Well, if you look closely, you can see that there's actually a wall slam notification popping up every time you, well, slam an enemy into a wall. This notification also comes with some extra damage dealt to the enemy that you are wailing on. It's hard to get a specific number for how much damage it is, but it seems to inflict the same amount of damage of the attack you use to slam the enemy into the wall. In other words, bullying your enemies against the walls and objects of the underworld makes your attacks do around double damage. What's interesting is that the game doesn't limit wall slams only when enemies hit walls. You can also inflict wall slams by hitting enemies against the side of pillars and even other enemies. If you manage to slam two enemies together, you will actually be rewarded with a body slam notification as well. Thinking about it from the game developer's perspective, they probably programmed the game engine to determine how far an enemy is meant to move when struck by a weapon with knockback. If something interrupts that move, such as a barrier or other enemy, that extra move distance is converted into bonus damage and applied to the enemy that can no longer travel. That means that the Stygian Blade and the Aegis Shield have the potential for huge amounts of bonus damage from wall slams since their attacks have some knockback effect by default and Poseidon's boons could potentially do staggering amounts of damage to enemies thrown into walls. Tip number three, corner tougher enemies. Tip number three is an extension of tip number two, except instead of wall slams, we are going to talk about cornering tougher ground enemies. Cornered is another notification that pops up similar to wall slams, except you need to force enemies against the side of a pit and yell, SPARTA, in order to inflict it. Cornering is separate from wall slams because it can only be activated when slamming grounded enemies into the sides of pits, and it does significantly more damage than wall slams as well. I actually really like this combat trick from a game design perspective, because there are only actually pits in Tartarus, Elysium, and the Temple of Styx. These levels are where you're going to find much tougher enemies in comparison to Asphodel. Asphodel has the river Phlegathon, which as a lava trap is very good at handling the more numerous medium toughness enemies that you will find on that level. 
when you do find yourself in a room with a big pit, it is definitely worth your effort to try and force enemies against its edge, since as near as I can tell, inflicting a cornered status on an enemy does around three times the damage of the original attack. So it's a very effective way to quickly melt enemies, and another reason why you should always take Poseidon's boons. However, flying enemies cannot be cornered against the edge of pits since they're, you know, flying. So try not to knock them back over pits since you can easily end up putting a ranged enemy in a spot that is difficult for you to reach and deal with. Tip number four, armored enemies are tough. Tip four is that armored enemies are tough. And no, I don't just mean that they have an additional health bar for you to grind through. Armored enemies are tough because armor functions as its own status. As a matter of fact, it's best not to call these enemies armored enemies as they are technically elite enemies, but more on that in a minute. Anyway, there are two key characteristics that make your regular armored elite enemy harder. First, they don't flinch when Zagreus hits them. In video game design, flinching is the common term used for when a character is hit by an attack and an I've been hit animation plays, causing that character to stop performing other actions. In Hades, when you strike an enemy and they flinch, they are unable to attack or move. The Loud of Tartarus probably has the most over-the-top flinch animation that we can see, and when you're new to the game and still spamming your attacks on enemies, you are relying on the flinch mechanic to make it so that when you stab them, they don't punch you in your perfect Greek god gob. Well, when they're armored, they're more than happy to take a small flesh wound to break your chiseled jawline. While an enemy has armor, that is they have any of their yellow health bar remaining, you cannot interrupt their attacks or stop them from moving. This means that you need to actually dodge around their attacks while breaking through their armor, which can be especially difficult when you're new to the game and haven't mastered your dodge timing or learned the enemy attack timings. The second thing that makes armored enemies tough is that the armor health bar acts as a damage gate. What I mean by damage gate is that any excess damaged armor doesn't roll over to deal damage to an enemy's health. If they have one armor and you hit them with an attack that does 100 damage, you'll only do one damage before breaking their armor and losing the remaining 99 damage. This is particularly annoying with slower high damage single shot attacks like the basic attacks on the Coronaut bow, critical hits, and the doom curse. So keep in mind when you're fighting armored enemies that they can absorb more damage than you might expect, and that faster, rapid striking attacks will probably be better at chipping off the final bit of armor than your doom inflicting Nova Smash. As a bonus note, let's mention why armored enemies are actually elite enemies. When you escape the underworld for the first time, you're going to be rewarded, rewarded, with a Pact of Punishment. This pact allows you to add additional conditions onto your run to make things harder for more high tier resource rewards. One of these additional conditions is the benefits package, which gives all elite enemies an additional power such as teleportation, increased damage, or gravity wells, and they will mess your day up. Fortunately, as beginners, we don't have to worry about that for some time. Tip number five, traps and pillars kill enemies. Tip number five is all about channeling our inner Sun Tzu and using the battlefield to our advantage. Traps and pillars are in every room in the underworld and are very powerful tools for dealing with our enemies. Of course, traps can also kill us, so there's a little bit of finesse required. First, traps are the pressure plates in Tartarus, the lava of Asphodel, the crossbows and knight statues of Elysium, and then the pressure plates, poison vents, and saw blade launchers of Styx. Tartarus, Asphodel, and Elysium also have bombs in most rooms that are activated with a single strike. Every trap, with the exception of the poison vents and sticks, can be used to deal huge amounts of damage to your enemies. Some of them simply require you to lure or shove your enemies into the correct position to be hit, and some, like the bombs and pressure plates, require more timing on your part. Personally, I find that the bombs are my favorite tool for quickly killing enemies, as they do a huge amount of damage and it's easy to escape their explosion radius after activating them. The crossbows of Elysium and the saw blade throwers of sticks are more dangerous to take advantage of because you could very easily maneuver wrong while positioning the enemy and end up getting hit yourself, and those really hurt. But in Tartarus, where every player spends most of their time, we have the pressure plates. For the spike pressure plates, there is a delay between stepping on the trap and when the spikes inflict damage, so it is possible to press the plate then lure an enemy onto it, though it is tricky. The plates that activate the shooting statues are much easier to use against your enemies since you can hit enemies that aren't standing on the pressure plate. 
One extra tip here is that enemies can activate pressure plates, but in Tartarus they are actually programmed to walk around them when they are trying to reach Sagrius. They still move onto a plate if that's where their attack leads, but otherwise seem smart enough to avoid them. Until you get to the Temple of Styx at least, where enemies are happy to activate pressure plates with no regard for their safety or the safety of their friends in a single-minded desire to kill Zagreus. One final note is that flying enemies can't actually activate pressure plates, but you can activate the pressure plate and then force them onto it if you want to say kill a witch with a spike trap. Lastly, we have the pillars found in every room. Pillars are Zagreus' best friend. Not only do they do a huge amount of damage to nearby enemies when they are destroyed, they also cannot do damage to Zagreus. Almost every regular room has them, and they even respawn in Elysium, so make sure you take advantage of them for killing your tougher enemies. Tip number six, dashing actually teleports you forward. Our sixth and final tip is that Zagreus' dash is actually a short-range teleport. This means that while you are dashing, you can pass through any obstacle in your path. This includes enemy attacks, walls, pillars, enemy bodies, pits, and even the dang Great Wall if you can find it. The only limitation to this is that you can't dash very far. You'll only pass through enemy attacks for a brief second and you start with only one dash. In Tartarus, this is good enough since most of the rooms are very small and confined, meaning you don't need your dash to help you move around as much. But once you reach Asphodel and Elysium, the levels open up and it becomes far more challenging to reach and pin down enemies while maintaining your dash to avoid damage. In order to deal with these challenges, I recommend that new players unlock the greater reflex in the Mirror of night, giving them two dashes to start off with. As a new player, having an extra dash will help you jump over pits easier, help you avoid enemy attacks easier, and also help you chase down wily enemies. As you begin to understand the length of your dash, the invulnerability timing, and what obstacles you can dash through, you should then switch to ruthless reflex and the single dash again. At first you'll really struggle because your timing has got to be spot on with only one dash, but the damage increase and dodge chance from ruthless reflex is just too good to pass up. It's important to go through this process of intentionally training your dash reflexes because the Hades combat system is all about maneuverability, and you'll never escape the underworld until you master your dash. I hope these tips have helped you in your quest to escape the underworld and have made the start of your journey that much easier. I now challenge you to leave a comment down below with a beginner tip that you wish you'd known when you first started playing Hades, or if you have further questions you can leave them in the comments down there and I'll answer them in the next video. Thank you so much for watching you guys, and we'll see you in the next video, and remember, there is no escape.